Hey everyone, Crow back again, and we're gonna take a look at this Every K collection right here, number 23, Renovation Collection 1. There are 12 games in this collection, and the main focus of this video will be my ranking of the games, as well as where I'd rank this collection among the previous Every K cartridges that I've covered. In these videos, I used to briefly talk about each game as well, but I'll no longer be doing that since I've started making separate videos for each game that go a little bit more in depth than I was able to in these videos. If you're interested, I'll link a playlist to those videos in the description. All of the games in this collection are games that are originally published by Renovation in North America for the Sega Genesis. Renovation Products was actually a division of Telenet Japan that would release their games specifically to North America. If you were to look at the developers of the games in this collection, alongside Telenet, you'd also find games developed by Wolf Team and Riot. But the thing is, is that those were actually divisions of Telenet at one point or another. Now, even though all 12 of the games in this collection are the Sega Genesis slash Mega Drive versions, only four of them were titles that were exclusive for that console. Five of these games were also released for the Sharp X68000, and three of them were also released on the TurboGrafx CD. However, only the North American Sega Genesis version of these games were published by Renovation. One last thing I found interesting was that four of the games in this collection are part of a game series that had their origins on the NEC PC-88, a Japanese home computer that I knew very little about before I started researching these games. But let's get on with the game rankings. Dead last on the list in spot 12 with a rank of D, I've put Beast Wrestler, a game with some good ideas such as the training and combining of monsters to evolve your creature through wrestling matches, but the execution of both I felt was just not really that great. The most entertaining thing I found about the game was all the typos and English it contained. In spot 11, also with a rank of D, is Treja, a turn-based RPG with subpar visuals for the platform, confusing menu navigation, and absolutely no challenge or strategy necessary once you realize that you can bulk up your party's defenses with accessories to the point that not one enemy in the game can actually hurt anyone in your party. At number 10 with a rank of C is Dino Land, a prehistoric themed pinball game with not terrible but also not great physics that has the gimmick of your ball also being your main protagonist who can unfold and walk around briefly during boss fights. The game features three tables, but access to the other two are so rare that you might never know they exist since you can only play the main table for so long before getting bored. Number 9 with a rank of C is Exile, an action RPG where you might wonder why the story is so hard to follow until you realize that this is a truncated remake of a game called XZR2. The action portions of the game aren't bad, but the RPG portion, uh, not so much. It's a very linear game with pretty much no opportunity to explore outside of the game's main story. At number 8 with a C rank is Final Zone, the next shooter with the odd twist that your weapons are also your armor. The reason I couldn't put this up higher on the list is because many of the levels have you hunting down moving enemy targets, and given how little of the surrounding area you can actually see, with no minimap to reference, well, it can be an annoyance just to locate your targets. Well, skipping from rank C to the next game at number 7, it has an A rank, and that is Arcus Odyssey, an action RPG that is really heavy on the action and light on the RPG. It's a bit of a shoot 'em up in a way, with maze-like levels and a little emphasis on exploration. Number 6, also with an A rank, is Soul Deeks, a pretty basic horizontal shoot 'em up where the gimmick is the ability to angle your side weapons. Also with an A rank at number 5 is Granada, a game where you control a futuristic tank out to eliminate all targets on the map before activating the boss encounter. The game is fast and frantic at times, and the only thing I can think of that could have made it better is if this was a twin-stick shooter. At number 4 with an A rank is Valis, a remake of the first game in the popular Valis series featuring protagonist Yuko as she becomes the Valis warrior in a side-scrolling slash em up with an in-depth story told through cutscenes, which weren't exactly standard for the time, especially for this type of game. Beginning our top 3 with an S rank is Valis 3, a game very much in the style of the previous game, Valis, which I guess makes sense when you realize that Valis 1 was released after this game. I had to bump Valis 3 up a rank though, because for most of the game you have the ability to switch between three unique characters, which I feel adds to the replayability. In the runner-up spot at number 2, also with an S rank, is El Viento a game that is also side-scrolling platforming beat-em-up of sorts, 
but here our main protagonist Annette uses boomerangs as a primary attack. El Vienta also has extensive cutscenes throughout the game and is very fast paced with a very forgiving health meter as you can take a ton of damage without going down. It also helps that you don't have to worry about running out of magic since the magic meter always replenishes itself after a few moments. And the number one game in Renovation Collection 1 with a rank of double S is Gyrus, a horizontally scrolling shoot 'em up with the gimmick that all your weapons and weapon upgrades need to be stolen from enemy ships. There's a good variety of enemies and environments throughout the game, but the level bosses really steal the show. There's robotic space dragons, giant warriors and mermaids, and hell, even the Grim Reaper has it out for you. The game is difficult, but not overly frustrating. If you're into shoot 'em ups you may want to get this collection just for this game. Certainly a good deal if you consider that the original game cartridge for the Sega Genesis is going for about $60 these days, and that's just for a loose copy. So now it's time to rank the collection as a whole, and a game I've ranked as a C or less is more than likely a game I'm not going to want to play again. And in this collection of 12, there are 5 of those. Which actually isn't bad when you consider that I've ranked the remaining 7 as an A or higher, so definitely a solid collection here if I only look at the games that I want to play again. Now the dilemma is whether or not I rank this on the A level or the S level. If I were to put it on the A level, it would definitely be the highest because it's definitely a more solid collection than Technos Arcade 1. But if I put it on the S level, it would definitely be the lowest on the S level, just because it definitely wouldn't go above Mega Cat Studio Collection 1. I mean, it's the collection that has Tanzer and three other S ranked games. I think I'm gonna just give it an S rank and put it here, but just barely, I think. Maybe as more collections get ranked, I'll change my mind. But the quality of the average game seems to line up a little bit more with the rest of the S ranked collections than the A ranked ones, I think. Well, this one took me a long time to get through. I played through about half the games in the collection before I decided to change the way I was doing these videos. So then I had to take a break to then re-rank everything Evercade related that I already did before I can move forward with even creating the first of the game videos for Renovation Collection 1, just so all the rankings would be based on the same system, hoping that everything would just be easier and make more sense going forward. With all of the Renovation Collection 1 now behind us, hopefully Gremlin Collection 1 will move along smoother now that there's a new template to work off of. So. I'd better end this video now so I can get started on that. See ya!